Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mobile App Academy. This is our live building series where we show you how to build and configure ServiceNow mobile apps on the Now platform. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow, and I'll be your host for today's session. Um, if you do happen to be joining us for the first time, welcome to the session. Uh, we have product experts here to provide guidance, best practices, and answer any questions that you have along the way. And we do host these app academies on the last Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific, in which our recordings are posted to YouTube on the ServiceNow community channel. Um, just to point out a few resources that we have available, if you are new to mobile, um, we recommend that you check out some of our self uh, enablement resources, which you can find on our community site, such as our Essential Training blog and mobile FAQs. But if you are looking for more hands-on training, we do also have labs and now learning courses available. And of course, uh, we also have our playlist to all of our previous app academies where you can find sessions like getting started with mobile app builder or how to build a custom mobile app and so much more. But with that being said, let's get started with today's topic in which we continue our getting started with mobile app builder series. Today, we are going to dive into how you can configure record screens. Um, just to quickly review today's schedule, we'll start with a quick overview on record screens, and then we'll jump into the exercise and finish off with some Q&A. Uh, it should be a pretty short academy, um, but uh, we'll try to use the session to answer any questions, that uh, as many questions as possible. Um, Okay, so mobile record screens. In part one and part two of this app builder series, we showed you how to how you, you can configure the initial list screen. And in this session, I want to deep dive onto how you can configure your details of a record screen and all the things that you can do with it. Um, in case you aren't aware, uh, a record screen is what you use to display content for a single record. You can configure functions for users to take actions on those specific records, like edit or update task. And you can also add segments to display different types of information um, using embedded screen segments. Uh, on a record screen, there's five different types of segments that you can use, including detail screen, uh, an activity stream, a related list, an embedded browser, and an embedded list screen. Your most common three, of course, are gonna be your details, activity, and related list. Um, for an embedded screen, uh, those are used when there's specific when there's specific record data that you're trying to show in your instance, and maybe that data isn't supported natively, and so you can link out to it. Or if you want to link out to an external URL, um, that is also support, uh, a supported use case. For related list, um, know that related list it only supports relationships that are defined uh, by a reference field between two tables. If you do happen to be using custom relationships or scripted re relationships on your related list, um, then you can actually use an embedded list screen uh, as a workaround. And uh, I've shown that workaround in a very old academy um, pr uh, prior to using mobile app builder. And so I think that video is going to need a refresher. And so um, we'll have a standalone academy in the future covering related list very soon. Okay, but for today's session, we're going to focus on enabling just the detail screen, um, you know, configuring the card on the details and how it differs from your list screen, adding a detail segment, uh, as well as additional screen fields. Uh, and then, you know, we'll add uh, an edit function um, in all the places that are supported on a detail screen, which include uh, top menu, footer, and there is a new location that we released in, uh, I think, Tokyo or Utah, but we'll also cover that uh, in a future session as well. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, let's transition out of this PowerPoint over to a new screen. And uh, I did have Charity join us. She is uh, one of our mobile gurus who can help answer questions along the way as well. Um, so let's share a new screen. Okay, this should be better. So you should be able to see my instance on the right side and then my mobile app on the left side. Um, what we're gonna do here is you can see that I have a list screen for critical task. Um, 
right now, if I tap on it, um, it doesn't actually take me anywhere. Um, but if I tap on see all, I can see that this is a, a list screen with you know three records. Um, right now, I only have configured the list screen. So how do I also create, uh, how do I further drill down into additional details? To do that, we're gonna first launch mobile app builder. And then we're gonna find the specific list screen. This currently lives in my field service mobile app. And so we'll transition into the field service mobile scope. Okay. And then this specific screen is called critical task. So we'll go and look up critical task and then open that up. Um, and if you look through this hierarchy here, um, if you're familiar with mobile app builder, um, this, uh, it'll be clear to you that this currently only has a list screen configuration. But if I show you, we can just drill down uh, to show you what exactly has been configured. So I can go into the screen segment, go into the stream, which contains my data item. Um, for my data item, I can go to the list item config, which contains my card for my list screen. Right, this is the card for my list screen. But I can't go any further from here. Um, if you want to go further, you, you'll use this table called embedded screens. And that's where I mentioned there's five different types, right? There's details, activity, related, um, embedded browser, and um, embedded list screen. Okay, so let's create a new one. If I want to show a details screen, um, this will require a record type of screen, okay? Because a detail screen, really, it's attached onto the record screen as a segment. Um, a segment is, you know, uh, I'll be able to show that in just a second, but let's create this record screen first. And then we'll call this, you know, critical task record screen. Uh, and then best practices, I think I've shown in the past, you know, to use an existing card, but best practices, if you actually want to manage your cards and make sure that they differ between your list screen and form screen, you'll actually want to create a new card here. Um, so let's call this critical task record screen. All right. And then um, on the card template level, this is where you can use existing templates if you want the card to match identical. But if you have a use case where, you know, when you drill into this record and you want to show a different card, that's totally possible. That's where you'll create a new template um and then you know customize it however you want we i think uh part two is where we showed you how to customize card templates so definitely check out that academy if you want uh more information on how to do that but for this simple use case we are just going to create or replicate this identical template that we have here um if you want to know which template this list screen is currently using uh, what I would recommend doing is uh, going back to your list screen card. Um, and then you can click into the card template. And this is currently using um, what is it currently using? Critical custom template. Um, I'm going to open this up in mobile app builder just or a card builder just to make sure. I just want to make sure that this is truly a custom card and not one of the out-of-the-box ones. But while we'll give that a second to load, um, let's go back to my record screen and see if we can find it. I think it was called custom template. Oh, okay. So it is custom template. So, um, you know, all I did here was I went to card template, looked for the name, and then I'm simply going to select this exact same template for my record screen. Okay. So custom template and apply. 
and then we'll save. Uh, looks like it's ask. Oh, there's a field that we didn't fill out, which is icon. Um, even though this won't show up, it's just a required field. So we'll select any icon to apply to this. So, you know, I'll select um, bookmark and save. Okay. So now at this point, um, we're not quite done yet. So we've configured a new record screen and we've told it what template to use, but it, this template doesn't have any fields yet. Uh, or the card that you are pointing it to, to use this template, doesn't have any fields yet. So um, on my record screen, uh, I need to now drill into the card. Step one is fill in the fields for your card before I do any other segments, like details or activity stream. So let's go ahead and launch this in mobile card uh, builder and then fill out some fields. Right now, all of these fields are currently blank. Unless your template has some predefined fields, which you can totally do, um, to save you an extra step, uh, commonly, if you do create your own templates, what you would do is, um, let's open up a card template, open card builder. So this is the template itself. If you wanted to, um, define a hard-coded value, you can fill it out here under text value. Right now, all of these components are blank. There's no values in it because it's saying, you know, this is just an empty template. You can fill in your, your fields at the card level. Um, but if you wanted, if you know that you have multiple screen, uh, screens that will use the same template and they all use the same fields, you can save some steps by filling it at the template level. Okay, um, so we won't do that. Let's go back to our card now um, and we'll fill out the fields directly on my card. So uh, for this first one, let's, oh, notice that it's not allowing me to map any fields. Um, the first thing that this indicates to me is that I forgot to select the table. It currently doesn't know what field to pull because you haven't told it what table you wanna pull fields from. So we're gonna to have to close out of this and go back to my card for my record screen and then select this table. Really this table should be a required field, but because we didn't make it mandatory, this is often a forgotten uh, or a field that it's often overlooked. So let's select the work order task table. and then save. And then let's go and open this back up. Okay, so let's go and fill in um, similar fields here. So we'll select number. Um, we can make it slightly different. Uh, let's also fill in priority as well as short description. Uh, this is expecting some sort of image field. Um, we don't need to fill this out. If you ignore any of these fields, it will, um, it won't, you don't have to actually use every component on this template. So if there are components you want to skip, it's totally possible. So let's go in and just save these three fields here. And then this will be my card. <laughs> okay. So now at this point, if I refresh my screen on my mobile app, I should have a, uh, a record screen that I'm able to tap into. <clears throat> okay, so now you can see that I have this new record screen with all the fields that I've attached, right? Um, this is what we call a record screen. What you're more, probably more familiar with is, you know, if I tap into one of these and you have all these different segments, 
right? <clears throat> but at the most simple form of a record screen, this is what it is. You don't actually see those segments until you start um, selecting and creating your segments. Um, so if you want to show additional fields, show the activity stream, show related lists, you'll have to configure them uh, manually. Okay. So let's start with the details. Um, let's go back to <coughs> mobile app builder. And let's go into my record screen here. So if I want to create segments, all I have to do is go into my record screen, scroll down, and then you'll find this table called record screen segments. Let's create a new one. Um, notice that there's two different types of record screens. You can totally ignore this dynamic record one. This is um, a very specific use case that we've enabled for the ITBM team to build, um, uh, I believe, timesheets. Uh, so you can totally ignore this one. Uh, always use the record screen basic one. Uh, when you create a new segment, it's going to ask for uh, an embedded screen. Um, we don't currently have a, oh no, we do have an uh, embedded screen. This embedded screen will be your, oh, sorry, no, no, no. Uh, we need to create a new embedded screen every time. So we'll create new here. And then these are your options for what type of segment, right? Um, I want a details, so let's create details. Uh, again, it's going to ask you to fill in an icon. We'll select any. Uh, and then the important information is what fields, additional fields do you want to expose? Um, I want it to pull from the work order task table. And then um, this is where you can fill in the fields. I want to show you something, all the field types that we support today. Um, so if I look at service now, service now, now mobile screen fields, we have this product doc page here. And I just want to show you all the different types of fields that we support and how they will display on your mobile app. So these are all the different types. You have text, which is pretty straightforward. We also support percentages, image types. You can display the image directly on your diesel screen and you can click uh, and expand it further if you want. We also support attachments. So not only can you see attachments on your activity stream, yet you can actually um, expose it directly on the details. Uh, we also support video files if you want to show um, PDFs and things like that. HTML, um, we support HTML type fields too. So if there's like custom formatting on that HTML field, all of that will be exposed. Um, checklist, uh, date, time fields, as well as staging. Okay. So, um, I'm going to select over, you know, just a few fields just to show you an example. Let's bring over. Um, and when you select your fields, I typically leave a type as auto. But for whatever reason, if you ever run into an issue where you're not seeing the field um, displaying as you should expect it to, like if you select percentage or you select auto um, and you select a percentage type field, but it's not showing percentage. Where I would troubleshoot is going back to the screen field, changing the, the type from auto into the, that specific type that you want. So that, that's how I would troubleshoot, okay? Uh, but for now, let's bring over um, fields like location. Save that. Um, every time you create a field, you have to scroll back up uh, into detail screen and then create a new one here. Uh, let's also show attachments. Hopefully the work or task has an attachment field. Oh, um, doesn't have attachments here. Okay, so maybe not. 
Uh, let's also show, uh, you know, description. I don't think the work order test table has any HTML fields. So there's not a lot of fields that I can display the different types, but just know that you can reference the product docs uh, to see all those different examples. And then let's bring one more over. Let's also show um, maybe open by. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and refresh our mobile screen. And then show you some of the updates. So at this point, if I tap into my list screen, um, you'll see all the fields that you exposed. If you want to be able to control the order, you can set the order here um, on each one of those specific fields. So you know, if I want location on top, we'll give it an order of 10. Uh, description underneath, so 20 and then 30. And then that should reorder it however you want it to, okay? Um, if you're wondering why is it not showing the segment segments yet, um, for any uh, screen, whether it be a list screen, right? So this is a list screen, or whether it be a record screen, if you only have one segment, it won't show the segments. It's not until you have two or more that you'll start seeing those uh, a segment buttons show up. So if I enable the activity stream, uh, you'll then start to see those two buttons. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's go back to our record screen and create a new record segment. And this record segment uh, will be a activity stream. Okay, critical pass activity stream. And then out of the box, these are all the different options that you have. Um, by default, we show everything, um, you know, work notes, additional comments. Um, you can disable attachments uh, through the settings here. That's a common ask that comes up every now and then. Um, table, we want this activity stream to show from the work order task. And then I'll give it a random icon. Okay, and then we'll save. So now if I refresh my screen, since we now have two segments, it will show you the different segments. Okay. Um, I think it's just taking a second to load, uh, but if you want to rename any one of these tabs, you name it, uh, you rename it here on the name label. So let's change this to, you know, just activity stream. Uh, maybe I have to refresh from the home screen. There it is. Okay. Um, and then we can also change the name of our details as well um, by going over to that segment. Um, so let's call this, I don't know, just, just details. Okay. Uh, the second thing I want to show, um, after you've created your segments, you've created all your fields, you've, you've, step one, you've configured the card. Step two, you've configured your segments. Step three is, um, adding any functions that you need your users to take action on. So common use case here is being able to, um, update or edit, uh, this task, right? So I already have a action function out of the box that allows me to do this. Um, this action function allows me to edit the short description and description if I want to. Um, so we're going to reuse this. I want to show you uh, the different locations that 
are supported on this record screen. Um, the most common ones are the top in menu, uh, as well as footer. And then there is a new function location that came out in Tokyo and Utah. I'm not going to show it in today's academy, but uh, we'll do it in, in a future session uh, because there is some steps needed to make that one work. Um, so just to show you what that is. Um, I think it's called record section, um, record section. Actually, let's navigate from here. Record screen. Here it is. Um, it's called configure a record UI section for a record screen. Um, and what this is, is when I have a record UI section displayed, you can actually have a little button underneath it. Um, it's a much larger button. It takes uh, pretty much both the left and right side of the screen. And you can control how big that button can be. But it's basically a button that lives on your launcher screen uh, that can take action for your record screens. Um, and basically, it's just a new location um, for your users to take action. It's The button is bigger, so it's more accessible. Um, it's more discoverable as well. Okay. Uh, but for today's session, let's enable it for the top menu and the footer. Um, to get it to show on the top menu, um, I have to go back to my record screen. Okay. So here's my record screen. And then there should be a table for top menu function instance. So if I create new, um, we'll call this top. Um, edit critical task top menu. And then for the display label, we'll just call it edit. And then it's going to ask us to select the function. Uh, we'll give it a second to load. I believe it's called edits. Um, not sure which one it is exactly. So let's try to find it. Um, if I open up another mobile app builder tab. I'm going to open up this card record and then it'll give me the name of this function. So Let's do that real quick. Third cold task. I should have just duplicated the tab. That would have taken me there faster. Um, so let's go down to the record screen card. No, sorry, list screen card. Because this lives on the list screen. Or I guess it lives on both. Um, that's, that's fine. So we'll open this up. And then this function is called edit FSM. Okay, perfect. So we'll select edit FSM. And then we'll save. So now at this point, if I refresh my mobile app, And then tap into my record screen. I should see a new button up here. Um, this little ellipsis, if I tap on that, it will show you your edit. Okay. So that's one location that supports, um, that is supported on record screens. The second location is on your footer. You can actually display a big button at the bottom of this record screen. Um, and then you can expose that by going to your, uh, record screen once again. Um, I think it actually lives on the details screen. So let's open up details. And there it is. Okay. So if you want to show it on your top menu, it lives on your record screen. If you want to show it on the footer, it's going to actually live on the detail screen. Um, 
because you're um, updating the fields directly on the detail screen. So let's create a new footer function here. And then we'll call this, you know, edit vertical task footer. The label will just be edit. And then we'll select that exact same function. And then we'll save this. Okay, so now if I refresh, I should see this uh, button down here. Um, I can also change the button emphasis color as well. Um, you have four different options. Uh, you know, destructive, I think it makes it red. Uh, but also it, it depends on your theming that you've applied to your instance as well. Prior to Tokyo, um, Prior to Tokyo, these button emphasis colors will work because it's using the old theming uh, colors. But if you've upgraded your instance to Utah and beyond and you've enabled Next Experience, um, know that mobile theming now inherits all of Next Experience's theming. It's supposed to be a one-to-one -one, um, uh, mapping. And so mobile won't use its own theming anymore. We're, we're just going to inherit whatever you have on the next experience side. So whatever next experience has defined for these colors, it will just use those. Okay. Uh, so let's change that back to primary and save. And then that'll change the color. Um, record screens also support one more location. It supports location called field, but for field type of uh, functions, um, it only supports smart buttons. So uh, we did cover a smart button academy. So definitely recommend checking that out if that's uh, new to you. But just a quick refresher. What is a smart button? A uh, smart button allows you to perform an action such as uh, you know being able to send a native email, making a phone call, um, navigate to a map location, or you can navigate to a URL as well. And then you can apply those smart buttons directly to these type of fields, right? If it's a URL, a uh, phone, address, so forth. I do have a location here, um, but I'm not going to do it because we did cover this in the previous like, App Academy. Um, but just know that those are the three types of locations that uh, we support functions on a record screen. OK. Uh, for the fourth location uh, that we just um, released for Tokyo or Utah, I'll cover in a future session. Any questions? Um, we have a question asking, is there a way to troubleshoot mobile via a desktop browser? Um, so we, we don't officially support these external um, uh, products that uh, that act as a reflector, the emulators. Have, yeah, or emulator. But I have heard of customers use um, products like P Cloudy um, and similar products um, that will basically display your mobile app on your desktop. Um, what I personally use is I just you know if I'm currently using a MacBook um, and I can use QuickTimes to pull up my mobile app just by connecting the the phone directly to the MacBook. Um, and also know that uh, for a mobile app builder on their roadmap, um, they're actually trying to create a, a built-in emulator. So that's something that we're looking to, uh, into for a feature release. Um, any other questions before we wrap up? I know today was a short academy. Um, for the next sessions, we will try to cover custom activity streams. Uh, related list, embedded screens, um, and basically everything that uh, all the use cases that we haven't covered for record screen. There's quite a lot of topics that we need to cover for record. Um, how do these buttons work in Android? Is it the same as iPhone? Yes. So I think the only difference for iPhone really um, and Android is for quick actions, 
quick actions on the iPhone will show up on the top right, but I think quick actions for Android will show as a floating action button in the bottom right. Um, for a record screen, specifically, I don't think there's anything different here um, for uh, when it comes to to functions. Um, you know, the 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 footer will show up here where you expect. And then the top menu will show up in the top right as you expect as well. So no differences from my understanding. Um, any other questions? Okay, if not, um, thank you all for joining us in today's session. Um, if you found this session helpful or if you have any topics that you want us to explore in the future, please let us know in our post session survey. Uh, it's survey won't take more than 15 seconds. Uh, it's just an opportunity for us to learn what topics and concepts you want us to dive into more. Um, but with that being said, we hope to see you at the next session um, next month. Thank you all for joining us. Cheers.